uh, my, my parents divorced when I was three. So for a while until my mom remarried, I was just a you know single parent, that kind of thing. And so it, it was a lot of like going on errands with my mom or like she's got a doctor's appointment. And I'm just sitting in the waiting room and that kind of stuff. But like I would just entertain myself, you know, sitting, I'd sit there and draw and draw and draw, come up with comics. You know, and it was a way, I mean, I'd spend, you'd spend, I'm sure, you know, like hours just coming up with some stupid idea and getting it down. Looking back, like, I feel like I'm better at rising to an occasion. Like if I'm given an assignment, if I'm put in a situation and, and then react to it, I'm not very proactive. Like I wish I was a little more proactive as a person just in general. When I knew you were coming in town, I was like, well, Matt's a good guest because he's a pretty amazing colorist and, you know, he's, he's got a lot of cachet and, and all, things to offer if we talk comics. And I've been stumbled on the fact that you're like microchip from The Punisher. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, well, let me just bring my little travel film bag. <laughs> I mean, I knew you were into drones and, you know, I'd seen the footage of that stuff online. Yeah, well, like you, I debated between film school and comics. Mm -hmm. I went to an art school, then before I had to decide my major, I was pretty sure, oh, I'm gonna go to, to do film and video. Because I'd done like, I'd gone to like film camp in the summer uh, in high school, and then me and my friends, you know, in the 90s, we made awful like Tarantino knockoffs, you know, yeah. in our backyard. Which is everybody that's ever tried to make a yeah. Tarantino movie yeah. made an awful, especially like Boondock Saints. Yep, yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they just had a slightly bigger budget than us. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, we, I mean, we did, uh, we did like talk shows, like yeah, yeah. you know, dressed in drag. This ain't talk your first shows. rodeo. No, uh, we would like reenact wrestling matches with, but do it in stop motion. Yeah, and so it, I, I've always had an interest in, in film stuff. But then, but it sounds like it was storytelling first. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then I read comics, of course, and 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 always drew as a kid. And then I, at one point, decided like, you know, I can draw. I should probably use this drawing thing. And the school I went to had a sequential art major. If if I hadn't, because so I kind of harp on the art school experience and how I'm like, oh, it was, yeah, <laughs> like that was way too much money for that. Uh, but the the fact is, for me personally, like when I say that, I'm like, T you maybe reconsider. It's a little too much money for what you get out of that. But like for me personally, it was probably pretty good because like if I would have been left on my own from 18 to 22, I wouldn't have been nearly as focused as I was being in school. You know, that's interesting though. Is like even the process of deciding to go to art school. Yeah, you know, like, I, well, I mean, for me, <laughs> that's a, it's a pretty lame answer because I was just like, man, I hate school. I don't want to go to a real school after I finish this. <laughs> that's I was, awesome. Yeah, I was like, <laughs> yeah, I gotta go to an art school. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I, feel, I feel like I fell into everything is what, I mean, like, I didn't set out to become a colorist. Well, see, I know how you became a colorist. So, like, I think what's interesting here to me is, is like, it, like when we were kids, digital comics didn't exist, so it couldn't have been a job path. It's yeah. not. It's not right. a thing you grow up wanting to be. Right. Like you don't grow up being like, I want to be a comic book colorist. Right. Right. You know. And that's the weird thing I think about now. I talk to some people who are getting into coloring now, and like. But now, yeah, that's what you were saying. Is you were saying that now, now it is. Right. Now, like it's. Like, so of course, coloring's better. Now it's not digital art. It's art. Art. Yeah. Yeah. It was school that led you to working for Lee. Yes, right, right. Yeah. Like I, I, I went to art school because I didn't want to go to a real college. I, I, I applied for uh, Lee Lowridge had a coloring studio in Savannah where I lived, and well, it's the only place I could see myself work. Or you know, and it applies to the degree I had. I just the schooling I just got, and it's the only thing in town that I would probably want to do. Colorists did the color work by hand on printouts of the paper with dyes or markers yeah, yeah. and then they would note like this is you know what what is this color it's this much yellow it's this much magenta it's a, whatever and they didn't know how to use the computer so they would then send those guides or maybe they didn't have time or whatever it was they would send those guides to a separation house which is what Xylenol also did so some of my earliest work was doing that stuff and then we, I'd sit there with a guide on this little thing and then the monitor here and I was just you know, well, and in talking my to numbers. Lee and you know, listening to like the people we know that work there, you were like the last guy there. Kind of me and Nick Filardi. Yeah. Um, and then Christian Donaldson worked there for like a summer, like right before he left Savannah. I mean, yeah, we were like that last little crop to right. come through. Yeah. Is that the point where you felt like you made it? I mean, no, there was a um, no where, where you broke in. You know, yeah, or, yeah, or yeah. You were, had but decided that this is. I'm no, gonna like be I didn't break into Lee. comics. I broke into Lee's studio. You know what I mean? Like it was like I got a job with Lee, but I don't. Like, I couldn't go to a convention as a pro, you know, like, 
I work right. for Xylen All Studios. Who the fuck is? Backdoor kind of way. Yeah, I mean it was definitely backdoor, and I talk about sometimes when uh, with other colorists who are starting or whatever, and they're like, oh, it's hard to make this work because I gotta still it doesn't pay enough to pay the bills, you know. And I and I kind of feel bad going like, well, you gotta do your day job, and then you gotta color for yourself at night because that is technically what I did, but my day job was coloring comics for Lee, uh -huh. and then my night job was coloring comics for me. And so, like, I mean, yeah, I was just calling comics all day. So, like, I'm kind of cheating. Lee and me. Yeah, <laughs> that's my autobiography. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, Lee would insist on being in my autobiography. <laughs> and then it was um, Ivan Brandon introduced me to. Uh, it wasn't the very first thing I did on my own, but the first like thing that got published was he introduced me to Jamie McKelvey, who needed a colorist for his suburban glamour little right. four issue thing. Someone had colored the first issue, so it was at that point, and then that was about the time I was. I was like, you know, I don't know, when I want to do this. this? I started with Lee, 2007, 2008, okay. maybe. All right. So I started working for Lee in 2003. Okay. And so I got, I, I was getting tired of working, well, not for Lee. I was just getting tired of doing that work. I don't know, I just wasn't fulfilling. Yeah, it's a day job. Yeah. I just started applying to all these other jobs when I was still working for Lee, because I was just like, I think I'm done with this. And then I was coming back from an interview at like this weird gift basket place. I was like applied to be an art director, which I was not qualified to be. Um, but <laughs> but yeah. at a gift basket, I don't yeah. know what. And I was, I think I was driving back from that interview and um, and Ivan called me and, and said, hey, so a couple of people are looking for color. Uh, so I started doing just some random kind of, you know, like this little image book. This little image book. This little image book. Yeah. Like, 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 weird gift basket. This weird gift basket. Uh, so I started just doing some just some random, kind of like, you know, like this little, this little image book. book. And it just, and it just it turned, into, it like, turned into, like, I'll do this, do this for nothing. Because that means, I, that get means I get a badge to the next call. So that's, that's, that'll, that'll be a load, load off. That'll be easy. And then it, and then it turned into, like, oh, oh, you want this you other want gig? This other gig? gig? And then, like, it just snowballed like it just into, snowballed into like, one year I was 100% working for Lee. The next year it was, like, half and half. And then after that it was just all me. All me. And so... That's when I felt like I made it was like that year that that's it was... how you should have quit Lee. Yeah. Like you send him a gift basket. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for the memories. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so that's when you feel like you. Yeah. When I started getting your, yeah. your dream. When of it was like, creative when it was like, oh, yeah, I mean, there's different, you know, there's you, you probably feel that a couple different times, you know what I mean? Yeah. And then something else happens, and you're like, no, now, it, this is it. This well, yeah, if we're very lucky. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah, sure, yeah, yeah, sure. Yeah. But I mean, like, yeah, there were, I mean, the first time was probably, well, I mean, Jesus, no, I think, I mean, even getting the job with Lee, like, I went to art school, and then I had to go find a job. I don't, I mean, like, I think there's that stereotype of, like, you get out of art school, and you don't, you're not going to find any work, and that worried me. I think that's another big theme in my life, is, like, the fear of not 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 having work or not being able to pay oh, my bills, yeah, I guess. I mean, I'm sure it's, it's not unique. Right, and you have a, a job where you are literally the person. You said you like having somebody give you an assignment. Mm -hmm. You're the guy that, like, everything's on fire. Make it work. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know? But I mean, like, which is nice. I mean, there's a couple of good aspects to that. Like, you save the day. You look like the hero. I mean, mm -hmm. like, I think, I'm sure colorists, uh, at least the ones who do save the day or do save the deadlines, like, are probably some of the editor's favorite people, you know? Like, Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. Uh, the writer's always the guy that's like, God damn it, just turn yeah, it in. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and the color's just like, thank you, thank you, thank yeah, you. Yeah, like, exactly. that's the emails we get, yeah. like, for turning stuff in. But I think, like, you know, one, it's self-dictated, you know? Like, a lot of the percentage of how, how much you look at each individual job as a... Thing that has to get done versus a thing that yeah. you're expressing yourself versus yeah. a thing that you want to connect with the audience you know there's this alchemy there mm -hmm. and those like percentages change you can dial them up yeah, or yeah. dial them back yeah. depending on what your own individual goals are right. right but coloring by virtue of the fact that you that you are part of a you know the way that this market is set up or the the template for a print successful print comic is is that you want it to come out with timeliness yeah or like with when the consistency out, right yeah. and so like your part of the job is you know because the other parts of the job people wrestle more with the, they don't wrestle more with the creative side of it but they have the luxury of mm -hmm. wrestling with yeah. how much of themselves they want to put into yeah. it yeah i feel like that narrows yeah your ability to be expressive 
Yeah, I mean a bit, but you know, like I do my worst work when I have more time. So for me personally, I'm kind of okay with it. Like when when I've got a deadline and I've got a couple of days, like I just I stop overthinking things and I just I mean, and I like I said, I just there are times when I when I think, man, if I just had more time with this. But every time I've got uh, uh, some lead time, I don't. I don't always do that best work. I just. But do you feel creatively fulfilled with what you get to express? Yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah. It's. It, I don't. I don't. Well, I mean, I do go f- look for some other creative outlets. But I mean, so I used to draw all the time, and I, yeah. my, I had aspirations of drawing for a living for in whatever, maybe not in comics, but, and I was all right. I was pretty good at it, and you know. But now I just spend so much time coloring. When I'm done with that, I'm done. Like I'm just. I'm not. But artists in particular are the most insecure people about you know we're like we chose to be in comic books so that we can be the fucking guy right you know like we can be the guy that controls almost every degree of it and we were talking about how in manga they used to have us or they still i guess do have assistants you know in american comics a lot of people will frown on right you know well he didn't draw everything in this like that's this other guy doing it right you know you look at film Directors, it's their vision, and then they find people to yeah. help them. He didn't yeah. hold the camera, or right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or even, yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You can be an all tour, and you still have fifty people helping you. Right. You know. Yeah, and you know, if you think about it, like that is, I'm my job is to be one of those assistants, essentially. Like I'm helping finish the art. I'm not creating it from whole cloth. I mean, I am creating certain aspects. Yeah, philosophically, like, I think we, like people like me who, who value like a cartoonist as the end all thing, mm-hmm. need to peel back on some of this so. i mean i think for me the best thing because i because I, I color so many books a month and then that's times 12 a year that's times the last 14 right. years or whatever it is like there's I've, you know i've forgotten more comics than i've colored you know <laughs> yeah, <laughs> or whatever yeah. like i would like sure. then you yeah but like uh but the ones that always stick with me are the ones that were i mean all of them are collaborative to some extent but there's somewhere i never talked to the artist or i never t- talked to the writer you know like um so the ones that stick with me are the ones that are more collaborative. The kinds of things I want to try and say and do and color, um, you know, having some success like helped make me, you know, make all that click a lot, a lot quicker, you know, as things started, as I started getting more work and noticed more. You know, we're all, you know, going to have self-doubt or be, you know, kind of, critical of ourselves and our art because we're you know if you're doing it right you you want to get better so the stuff you're doing now or the stuff you did in the last few months like you're you're bound to like eh, i don't know i don't know if this is that like, great anymore um so like there's always going to be like a lack of comfort with what you're producing to, to some degree um which i think is good and healthy and normal um so the comfort has to come in like your ability to you know how comfortable you are in implementing your ideas uh, and then the exercise, the real exercise is then like stretching your creative muscles as far as like coming up with ideas, coming up with new things to try with color, storytelling. So I'm not too precious about like me or uh, my style or my vision, this, that, or the other. Uh, I'm happy to toss one thing out the window and dive into another thing if it's going to get me to the the goal line like I always appreciate any and all (laughs) input and especially ahead of time if you know what you want it's one less thing for me to think about you know and then better yet you can show me what you want me like I go pretty different art styles from book to book and then change my coloring accordingly so like I don't know that I could be pinned down as like, oh, I only uh, that that oh that coloring style is obviously you know by Matt maybe some color choices, but so I feel like I'm jumping around a lot and like I'm much more a throw a bunch of stuff at the wall and see what sticks kind of colorist. Like I'm likely to forget which brush and I used from issue to issue and how I got a certain effect. So like you know I don't see anything as as being very tied to me. <laughs> <laughs> you know, like I probably did it different six times over six issues, you know? Yeah, part of me like wants exactly pixel for pixel the right color, the same color from issue to issue. And then part of me goes, why am I wasting time on this? Like nobody's flipping back and forth between 20 pages to check. Like 
you know. So that made me realize, like, I've been asked about, like, oh, how do you get faster? And it's just like, it's, you know, you learn, like, the shortcuts and stuff pretty quick. I bet after a, a week, you're on your way to, like, having those shortcuts pretty well ingrained. Like, you know, your muscle memory in your hand. But, like, the thing that's really going to speed you up is uh, implementing your intent the first time or second time as opposed to needing 12 times to do it. Yeah, right. You know, like, yeah. that's where you pick up speed is, you know, A, you look at a page and see most likely the right thing quicker, and then B, you're able to do that you know, translate that from your head to the page in less attempts. You know, it's like golf, I guess, right? Like, <laughs> Are you really going to make a golf? I don't know. I mean, here's <laughs> the, guy, the guy who's never played golf. I just know that lower scores better, so that seems like the right analogy yeah, here. Sure, yeah. You know, like, I, I, I'm taking fewer strokes. <laughs> uh -huh. I just golf shamed you. <laughs> uh...